All right, so today I figured I would share how I build up my 702 focus pulling rig um, that I have handheld. It's not fully completed yet, but it's getting kind of close. Um, I just need a couple of things to mount it with. Um, I'm looking at getting um, a 5 8 baby pin um, to super clamp, Manfrotto super clamp um, 2907 to mount that onto a C sand or something. So I'm um, also thinking about maybe doing a quarter 20 to uh, baby pin spud, or not spud, uh, baby pin um, adapter on the bottom of it. So, all right, let's get right into it. So um, here we have everything kind of laid out of what you're gonna need. Um, I'm pretty sure I grabbed everything, but I'm not 100% certain. So I've got my small little hardware and small rigging um, case and then over to my right off screen is my um, case that I keep all my extra rigging parts in. So we'll start here with um, in the middle, which is obviously the 702 OLED that I have. Um, it's got two um, MPF and two um, LPE6 ports on it, like all of them do. It's got an SDI in and out, um, HDMI in and out. Um, and today we're gonna be using the HDMI um, ports on this um, because I am rigging up a Vaxxis Atom 500 um, which I do not recommend to use with your um, focus pulling rigs because it's just, it's very slow. Um, and the longer you use it, the, the more pronounced the delay becomes. Um, I think recently when I had it on set, we figured it was about two seconds worth of delay, um, which is entirely unusable. Anything over 0.1 second is, in my opinion, entirely unusable. So. Um, do not recommend this for that. Get a better system than this. Um, I bought this thinking that this could be a good solution at the time because it was 480 bucks. And I figured why not? I'll give it a try. It's brand new. It might be good. It uses H.265. Um, so in theory, it should be good, um, but it's not. Um, so if you're looking for just something to monitor stuff with and use it as a client monitor, this is not a bad decision. Um, this is not a bad option. Um, but if you're using it for focus blowing, I, I do not recommend it. So um, most of these parts are small rig parts, except for one or two of them um, are tilt parts, just because I have a couple of um, stuff that goes with my Nucleus M. Um, I've got a wooden camera battery plate, V-mount. Um, I've got some really crappy DNO lighting batteries which I also do not recommend because they become very loose over time. Um, and if you have them mounted onto something, you can just jiggle a little bit and you lose power to everything. Um, it's, it's not great. So, um, got our top handle, got our mono price, um, HDMI cables. Um, I find that they're great and they're cheap. Um, definitely use your right angle adapters with them though because the connections here break very easily. Um, this is my second set of them that I've had in I wanna say two months that I've owned them. So keep that in mind. Um, yeah, so here's another tilt apart, the other tilt apart, and then I've got a tilt to um, rail also. So, all right, let's uh, move some of these things aside so we can get started on this. So I'm gonna first move over all of the parts that we're gonna be using with the focus part of this. So right now, if you just need a wireless monitor for director, this right here is everything you're gonna need. You'll need four uh, quarter 20 screws. Um, I have these here just in case. Um, they're the uh, Night Izzy's, or Izzy Night, I can't remember, but they're great for keeping things nice and tidy. Um, you'll need two HDMI clamps, or not HDMI clamps, it's the HDMI right angle adapters. Your two rails, a cheese plate, um, a top, NATO rail if you want a top handle. Um, you don't need it, I find it's great because this setup is a little heavy. Um, I haven't weighed it, but my guess is around five to 10 pounds. So having the top handle is very helpful. Um, so, all right, let's just jump right in. So I'm gonna move our power over here, our fax is there, and pull off our cables. So we can focus on what we need right now. So you're gonna start with monitor upside down, take your cheese plate, 
Um, if you don't have a good quality cheese plate, I highly recommend getting one because it is going to help you rig everything you're ever going to need to rig. Um, cheese plates are great. I don't know why it took me so long to get one because this one was 10 bucks. Um, it may even be less on small rig. Um, I'll attach some part numbers and um, some different things on um, the description of this video so that way you can see them as well. Um, and that if you wanna buy any of the parts here, you can. Um, I have no affiliate links, although it'd probably be a good idea if I did get some, so, but yeah. So you're gonna start here, you're gonna throw in your cheese plate into the bottom of your monitor. You wanna make sure it's straight, which I have not done a very good job of, so let me fix that real quick. Um, because the straighter this is, the better that your whole work's gonna line up. Um, you may have seen a picture of this on my Instagram of this rig. Um, so if you're going off of that picture, um, this is the very, very first step and the very crucial step in building this rig. Um, now sometimes I leave this off first before attaching to it to the monitor because it just makes it easier to put on our next part, um, which is this 15 mil rail adapter, or um, sorry, not adapter, rail block. Um, which just goes in the back over here, which I'm not entirely sure you can see that all that well. I'll try to punch in um, on that so you can see some detail on that. And this is why I recommend doing this part first, but I always, I sometimes just forget and get overexcited about just putting things on. So, you know, um, the basic, basic stuff that happens when you're uh, building something out. Um, now there's plenty of quarter 20s on this. I have not attached any handles to mine, uh, mainly because I don't have enough handles at the moment. And my rigging solution for a lot of this isn't the best um, for that, um, mostly because I don't have the parts to do that. Um, looking at getting some of the small rig, uh, small HD side clamp or side uh, brackets that um, also allow you to put a strap on this so it's more secure. Um, and they're about 10 bucks a pop. I would recommend, highly recommend those. Um, if you're using the small rig, um, top handle, I got this it's just straight out of the top of it, um, just because that's, it's just easier. All right, done that. So next, we're gonna throw on our NATO rail up at the top. Again, you wanna make sure this is straight. Um, I'm realizing now that I have some extra bits on my NATO rail that aren't normally there, however, um, I'm just gonna leave them for this build because it's not entirely important that we take them off. So it's mainly this part right here that has the 15 mil rail on it. Uh, all right, now we're gonna slot in our rails and you're gonna butt them right up to the back of the monitor. And you'll tighten these down. And the nice part about these is that they're ratchet, well, almost ratcheting. Um, they, uh, they pull out like most camera equipment to allow you to have that flexibility to tighten things down in tight spaces. Uh, so I highly recommend this part. Um, it's like 10, bu 10 bucks, you can get a two pack for like 15. Um, it's a really, really good deal. So, all right, next we're gonna work on our cabling. So you're gonna wanna grab your short cable for your access. Let's throw your right angle down into the monitor, which I have grabbed the wrong side, but that's okay, because we're gonna throw both of these on here um, to try to save this cable's life a little bit longer. Um, and drape it down into the bottom. Now we're gonna take our Faxis um, and use the quarter 20 on the bottom with this tilt apart, which is the monitor bracket that comes with um, the bracket for the handle or rather the fizz. Um, I'm just gonna screw this right in, not super tight because we wanna be able to adjust it as we're going. Um, that way, when we slide on our battery plate, and I'll just give you a preview of that, it cinches up. 
nicely to it because we'll be throwing on this MPF to D-tap adapter to slot into this um, using our um, LP6 on the monitor. Um, it's good to have both of these because you never know when you're going to need an LP6. You never know when you're going to need an NPF. Um, so yeah, so do that. So I'm happy with this position right here. So I am going to take a smaller Allen key, slide it through, and use it to torque all the way over to tighten this down. Don't do it too hard because these can break. Um, I've not had one of these break on me in a while, but they do. So um, let's slide on our MPF adapter into the back. Um, run that on. Start tightening that a bit. You can leave it kind of unstraight if you want, but I, I recommend just straightening it out because why not? There's no reason not to. Right, now we're going to throw our HDMI cable in. Um, I'm actually going to plug this into the, uh, actually the top one to leave open my D-tap on my plate. Uh, now let's install the battery on this side. Um, these cables have already been tied up because that's just how they live in my bag. Um, you can use these if you want to tie them up a little bit further. Um, yeah, I'm actually going to remove this right angle, this particular one, um, to try and see if this will work. Like that. Um, I'm just figuring out what other adapters I might need on this build for other things and which ones in the future I might want to buy because I bought um, these two particular um, right angles in a pack and they come in um, both um, right-handed and left-handed, I believe is what it's called. Uh, but rather one of them goes up, one of them goes down um, based off of their orientation with um, the plug, the, the male side, that is. Yeah. So plug that in. Might as well plug this back in as well. Just to try to save it for when we put that plate on. Makes some sense to try to do that. Um, Try to bring it so that way the cable isn't bending too much, but it follows a very linear path. Um, now we're going to take our D taps, try to keep them relatively organized um, and going in a singular direction. Um, you may need to redo your cable wrapping on this. Sometimes it's necessary. So there's that. Um, turns out I actually want to move this to the bottom one. And this fouls on that a little bit. So what we're going to do is a little bit of creative solutioning. Unplug this. And now in my wooden camera plate, there's a hole large enough for the HDMI to run through will give me the flexibility to sandwich this plate down as much as possible. So now it's flush with the Vaxxus, um, with the D-tap being the only thing that is fouling. Otherwise, I could run it in a little bit more. Um, however, I'm pretty happy where this is at right now because this keeps a lot of the center, center of gravity very centralized on this build, um, which is something that I very much value. Um, and you can notice that our cables are pretty nicely tucked in, not perfectly, but decently enough. So we'll install this right angle again, push it in, um, and run our cable down. Um, now all we need on this is our top handle and power. So take a look. These cables aren't the nicest looking on the inside, but it works. So install our top handle. I want to center it for even weight distribution. Um, take your wrench and we're going to move it in there to give us a little bit of extra play. Just allow this, yep, to cinch right back. 
Um, a good trick that I have for these for making sure that they're level is to put as much pressure um, that feels safe over top of the T portion when you are tightening it back down and that should allow you to mount these, um, this rail or handle flush on top. So you can, you don't have to have this part on here. I just leave it on here because this is the one I use for my camera. Um, whenever I have a shoulder rig or handheld or, or really any rig um, and I mount monitors off of it and everything. So well, here is most of our build. All we need now is our D or V mount battery. Um, but I'll give you a rundown first. So again, we've got our HTML cables on the inside running through this into here. Um, got our Vaxxis, all powered in. Um, got our small HD powered as well. And got our handle, got our cheese plate, which we'll be using this again to mount on our focus um, if we need it. We've got a quarter 20 back here and a bunch of quarter 20s and 3 8s over here as well, um, which gives us plenty of extra mounting options if we need it, um, which I think this was mostly out of frame here, which, um, so I'm gonna throw in an extra list over there. So we've got our cheese plate on the bottom. That gives us a ton of extra mounting options because we've only used two of them, technically at this point, um, which means that we have so many, so many more opportunities. Um, I do wish that this cheese plate um, where it has these blank quarter 20 spots uh, to mount screws in. I wish that one of them was on each side of this um, because that would make mounting this a lot more um, linear for me. Um, I think that's the word I'm looking for, but I could mount it instead of horizontally, I can mount it um, vertically, um, which would allow me to then have so many more options to have this more balanced on a tripod head when I, if I were to put that on there for a director. So, all right, well, let's power this up and take a look at it. So I will be, ooh, there is a new thing. So the V mount fouls on that cable, which I had a feeling might happen. Um, I'm always redoing my builds whenever I do these. Because I am always trying to be innovative in what I do, um, and that means sometimes I run into problems, like right now. So you're gonna see with this six-inch mono-price HDMI cable if I can't reach. Yep, there we go. Um, I've loosened the axis a little bit to give us a little bit more tilt to try to save this cable a little bit more. Um, but I have a feeling I'm probably gonna have to be replacing this one again too. So, but hopefully not. Hopefully this will last a while and these right angles were enough to try to save them for at least a little bit of time. Yep, here we go. So now this cable doesn't foul here um, on the battery. Um, and as you can see, our monitor's already powered on. Um, it's important to you when you're using the Vaxxas though that, and I often forget this because I always just turn them off when I'm done with them, that you power them on um, before you sandwich it in there because the power switch is back in here. Um, and if you just have a little screwdriver, you can just slide it right on in there, just like I have to turn it on. So, um, and that gets us to our start point. Um, and there we go. So we don't need, from what I had laid out, you don't need this one foot HDMI cable, and we don't need this um, right angle adapter. So um, this is, um, keep that in focus. Um, this is the, uh, I, I don't know how to describe these, but your uh, HDMI ports like this, and then your right angle goes down that way. So. Um, you need the opposite of this if you're plugging it into your small HD. So, which if I remember correctly, we should have enough room in here for it just to live. Uh, but in looking at it right now, 
um, I'm seeing that we do not. So having that right angle inside there is going to be crucial in allowing you to have that option. So now um, we have a director's monitor. Um, you can throw a sunshade on this, you can throw this on the seat, C stand or a tripod. Um, you've got plenty of options with that. Um, this is why I don't like these batteries. Um, as you can see, my monitor has just died. Um, so, which is my case in point for these monitors. Um, so it killed the Faxis as well. Um, so we have plenty of options for mounting on the bottom. Um, there's plenty of quarter 20s on the back here. I do not recommend using a friction arm for this, uh, mainly because when I tried it, um, it was too heavy um, because this thing, this thing isn't super light, especially when we add on all of this focus stuff, um, it becomes a little bit unwieldy. Um, however, it is still very usable and a, in my opinion, a good setup. So, all right, so, if you're just building a director's monitor, here you go. Um, and this, if you want to watch the monitor, I have it linked up to um, my overhead camera to be able to, to just be able to see it a little bit better um, and so that we also have a feed. So um, you can also see the delay that it has um, between the monitor and the movement uh, from the camera. Um, and this is coming directly out of camera, so there is no latency within um, a monitor setting it out. So, all right, let's attach on the Fizz. So you're gonna start with um, this 15 mil to quarter 20 blanks um, onto the bottom of this cheese plate. Um, what's important to note here is that you need to build in mind of this piece with the rail and the handle. Um, because the handle mounts into here um, and you don't want to run into the issue where your fingers are, when you're trying to go into the handle, are running into this rail. Um, that's an easy solution if you just want to move this handle down, you can. Um, however, I use this handle for multiple different things. Um, so in its current state, this is the best position that it's in. So what is often helpful is to start with your rail in this piece. You're gonna want to lock it down, um, and you're gonna want to like really cinch these down. So I often have um, like a multi-tool or um, like channel locks to twist these over a bit more to give them that extra little bit of torque that they need to be able to um, hold these and keep them from slipping. So um, I recommend just tightening this on real quick. And you want to try to mount, give this enough space to be able to mount so that way this can be a little bit off center so or on center. Um, so that way you can have all the weight evenly dispersed um, on the handle and between the fizz. So now that we know our holes. All right, so I'm, uh, I'm back. I uh, have to restart my cameras. Because this is a lot longer video than I was expecting it to be. So, um, yep. All right, so we're gonna mount our 15 mil rail um, adapter with the quarter 20s into the bottom of it. And it's important that it's straight um, because if this isn't straight, then it's gonna throw off um, a little bit of your hand holding um, and might add a little bit of extra strain on your wrist. Um, if you like it to be a little bit off, that's up to you. Um, again, this is your rig. Um, this is just how I like to do mine. So. And I like my stuff to be straight and level. That is me. So. Yep, pretty happy with that. I 
again. The tighter you mount these, the less likely that they have a slipping when you're bearing all the weight of this monitor. Because it is a lot. Put on our handle. small rig handles because they're got a nice wood grip um, very good in a single position so and we'll mount on our fit which has the uh, tilt -a bracket on it which I believe tilt is the only one who makes these so yep all right well there you go now you have a focus rig um, a handheld one. Um, I would, if I had the extra time and money, I would add on some um, side brackets for handles and a um, and a strap. But currently, I don't have those, so you're left with this. Um, but yep. Um, again, tighten these down. These wing nuts here and here. Um, so that way when you pick it up, the whole thing doesn't just rotate on you. So, yep, yeah, and there you go. There's your, your focus rig for the Nucleus M um, and the 702. So this is what I recommend. This is what I um, am planning on using. I haven't had a chance to use this quite on set yet, um, but I will sometime too. And when I do, I will let you know how it works. So cheers. Have a great rest of your day, and I hope that this was helpful. Um, here's some B-roll of the monitor as it is. So, see ya.